Hello and welcome to the video. This is the brand new Van Nicolas Nothau or Nothau. This is their latest offering in the adventure segment. And my name is the Polyglot Bikepacker. And I am out here in Finland for a Lapland gravel expedition. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about this bike. So this bike has been designed around 29 inch tires, as you see. And these are a whopping 2.6 inch. And this gives the bike a lot of comfort, a lot of maneuverability and ability to roll over things. And for your uh, changing terrain, that is actually a perfect setup. Um, I did a great divide last year on a 2.0 inch tire. And I did feel that at sections that was just too little. So the 2.6 is a very welcome addition. Although I would have to say that a 3.0 inch would be putting it too far. That would be too much. If you look at the clearance though, up front, we see that even with this 2.6 inch, there's ample clearance. And the uh, the manufacturer of Nicolas did say that it would fit a 2.8. So you could even go that route if you prefer. Um, on the rear side, I tend to disagree. Um, as you can see, this 2.6 inch fits really neatly. But would you want to go wider? I don't know. I think 2.6 is the maximum here and then you will have clearance for mud or when the wheel gets out of true. But hey, that's for the wheels. More important is the frame set. Now this frame set is a titanium uh, design. And as we can see here, nothing lasts Nothing looks, rides, lasts like a Vanicolas. Uh, I did ride titanium before. I have to say I am a big fan of titanium as a frame material. And I do like the fact that they even have their seat post in titanium as well. Uh, speaking of which, the saddle is of course a very decent Brooks. If you want to do adventure cycling, this is pretty much the go-to. Because this, this saddle basically takes the shape of your behind. And in that sense, it beats any commercial racing gravel saddle in my opinion um, so there's that um, next in line is the drivetrain this is the roll-off 14 gear drivetrain now for me this is the very first time that i've ever used this system i am still getting used to it there's a few pluses and also one minus i i no minus that's relative um, yes this is a quite heavy hub system Although on an adventure bike of this proportion, that extra weight, in my honest opinion, doesn't really play a role. What are the big, big plus? Let's start with that. The carbon belt is extremely durable, it's extremely robust, and instead of having to change your chain every two to 3,000 kilometers in the middle of nowhere, you can actually use this chain, uh, this carbon belt, to go five to 10,000 um, Ks, so that gives you a lot of confidence, a lot of reliability that you will not have to change down the road. I cycled from Belgium to China six years ago and I had to change my chain in Uzbekistan. That was not easy. Even in the divide in the States, I had to really plan the day I was going to switch the chain. But this really gives you the benefit of, of not having to do that. Now this system is maneuvered with a uh, shifting mechanism here. It's basically rotational. One of the big pluses is that you can instantly change from, in this case, your ninth to your second, and then it changes instantly. So this is very good. Even if you're standing still, you can change it back and then you can leave from a different uh, grid. So that's great. I did notice, and maybe this is just a matter of setting up the system, right? That sometimes if you slide back one when you're climbing, it first becomes heavier before it gets down. Maybe that's the issue with this setup, I don't know. Um, I did notice that if I push two, that problem never happens. But if you do one, it tends to kind of create more resistance just when you don't want more resistance. <laughs> but hey, uh, apart from that, I really like the system. Um, one other feature of this bike I'm gonna point out is the fork. So this is not a, a suspension fork. And you could be asking yourself, why in god's name when gravel is designing forks with suspension is this bike being brought to the market without suspension well in my honest opinion that is a good choice because first of all less maintenance less stuff to go wrong when you're out in the open um, so less uh, reliance on uh, having to rely on surfaces but also when you are climbing 
there's no dampening so you can really put the power down i have done a few climbs already where i was standing uh, in the pedals and i really felt that even though this is a somewhat heavier adventure bike i could really put the power down to the pedals and i could really accelerate going uphill this is a feat if you do mountain biking you know this this is a feat which you would lose if you have suspension it would dampen it somehow and you would lose your power in that extent plus honestly with 2.6 inch tires you can ask yourself how much suspension you would need i mean this is an adventure bike this is not a mountain bike so the combo of this rigid fork with the 2.6 inch tires is for me at least all the clearance all the suspension you would need also nice to point out is that the frame has been designed that way so that if you would slide your pedal here and you put your shoe on it there's no toe overlap okay so that's a very good design feature many bikes uh, do not take this into consideration and when you're doing a sharp turn you would you would basically block yourself and maybe even come to a fall uh, there was a solution for that and that is 27.5 inch then the wheel would be smaller the tires would be smaller and you would have a bit more space but this bike has been uh, thoroughly designed so that it can use the 29.2.6 size which is very wide and still have ample clearance here it also gives you ample clearance for your down bottle tube this is one liter so i am carrying one two three um, and as you can see this is not a single problem so this kind of design i like that for adventure and real life applications that is very good um, next up um, basic seat clamp i love it just a four millimeter allen key and no hassle no complex issues in the frame just make sure you don't over tighten this and you're done titanium uh, seat post 31.8 millimeters decent size i like that as well um, for the rest there's a lot of mounting options on this frame um, i didn't take my rear rack this time because my finland trip is only two weeks so i decided to go with this setup but i will be doing a new zealand trip in two months time that will be two months on road and then i will go all out with the rear rack and the panniers which i believe will be a fantastic setup right here then to the top of the cockpit there's two features i would really like to address one being this handlebar shape to be very honest my original thoughts were wow can't you just make a, a draw bar but honestly there's a few reasons why i like this first of all this is an extra position to put your hands so this is one this is one and this is one so that's very nice but also it gives you more space to put stuff as you see i have on here a bell a light a gps unit and there's room for more so that's very positive um, i also like the fact that having this kind of setup it does give you more leverage and, and and control when you're going down on rougher sections so for this kind of bike i think it's a very good design um, if it would be only this like the normal mtb handlebar I wouldn't be so fond of it but this gives a nice plus i have to say um, and then what i really like about this bike is this dynamo hub let me film it from that angle this dynamo hub um, is really fantastic i have been on the road for a few days and i haven't had to use my power bank even once so what basically happens is this is from the cable um, and it goes all the way here to this hub system Hey, is it visible yeah, like this the hub system so what it does is while you're cycling it charges your device in this case my gps was charging but apart from that it's also charging an internal battery and yesterday i was making my tent and i put in my phone for charging and it gained an extra extra 15 percent of battery just while i was putting up the tent okay there's no eternal life in there but i think that uh half a charge of a mobile phone is in there if you have cycled all day so i have been just swapping between my gps unit and my mobile phone that's it i did bring a very big power bank but in hindsight i didn't have to um, so that's a very very big plus uh, for me for this bike this really puts the adventure uh in the concept because it makes you self-sufficient you don't have to go into a bar or a restaurant or a hotel to charge your stuff you can stay outside because you're already provided and this is for me 
a very important feature of an adventure bike. So very good thinking there, Van Nicolas. Um, what else do I need to point out? I did attach this thing, uh, this top tube bag, with the uh, normal, uh, how do you call this, the, the straps. Um, because I was going to put my heavy power bank in here and I wanted it to be stable. But actually there are two bottle cage mounts, or just mounts, um, below here. Just like here. So you can buy one of these top tube bags that are like uh, attached very firmly. I just chose this solution. Because A, I didn't have this kind of bag. And second of all, I needed a big bag for my phone and my power bank. But on hindsight, I could have gotten a smaller bag without the power bank. Just so you know that there's mounting options there as well. Here you see the name of the bike. It's not visible completely, but it's Notal with the AU from Australia. Um, bottle cages, we have three of them. Um, this is a size medium. You could also opt for the frame bag. Um, for this trip, I didn't feel the need to. For New Zealand, I will probably go that route because I will have the rear rack and panniers. I will have the, uh, the frame bag and then I will put my bottle cages here and I will still have one, two, three more stuff to put, uh, more space to put stuff and then my uh, rear uh, setup. Uh, and my personal build for this trip, I just have a top tube, a saddle bag with uh, inner tubes, a multi-tool, tire levers and some other stuff. I have a rear light, I have a front light of course, very important. Not that it gets dark in Finland in the summer, but okay. Um, so yeah, there you have it. This is my very basic setup. Also, I need to point out that this is a rack I had uh, like six years ago. And I just use it for this trip. It's, it wasn't designed around this uh, bike. It does fit. But there are better options on the market. Because I'm already considering of getting a different one. Um, but just for this trip, I couldn't get it on time. So I just went with it. Um, but just so you know, it's not one that is designed for this bike. There are better options out there at the moment. So, a quick recap. A very capable adventure platform. With lots of... Uh, convenient additions such as the handlebar and the dynamo hub and the wide tire clearance and the rigid frame of titanium and the many mounts and bolts you can use. The weight I wouldn't dare to say but I do think this bike is heavier than a standard gravel bike. I mean it makes sense right because just this tire this 2.6 and this WTB is one kilo per tire. So the tires alone add two kilos. Then the dynamo hub system, I mean the, the roll off system, that adds 1.4 kilos. The hub adds some as well. And if you would contemplate this being basic frame weight plus all these additions, then yes, that would be a massive addition of weight. But remember, we need to compare this with a, for instance, steel adventure bike. And there we can see that a steel bike fully loaded with all their additions also is a heavy bike. And I did put this bike in my uh, box for the, uh, for the flight. With the box and the bike, um, I only had 23 kilos and that was a big box. Um, so I think that, um, and I had these bags in and the rack and all that stuff. So the whole setup was 23 kilos, box included. So I think that's a very, very decent weight. Um, I remember last year flying with my specialized Sequoia steel bike um, to the States. I had 32 kilos. Okay, I do have to be honest here and say that I did put my tent and my sleeping bag in that box as well. But I think that the netto weight would still be around 25, 26 kilos. So in a full package, this bike is still lighter than a basic steel adventure frame and setup. Although this bike comes with more functionalities, such as a roll of drivetrain and the cool handlebar and the internal dynamo hub. So for the weight, Relative to the performance package, I think you're getting a lot and I like this and I'm being critical of these things because I've had issues with other bikes and, and weight and stuff. But for me, weight on this bike really isn't the issue. I've had some steep climbs. Um, you just have to get used to how you shift on the roll off. I would say that's the main issue, but the weight itself, this is a very movable unit. And a testimony to that is that yesterday I did a 151 kilometer ride on this bike. If this bike were sluggish, I wouldn't have been able to do that ride, right? So uh, for the weight, 
relative to its value and its performance, I think it's very decent. Now, I'm gonna stop here with the video, 15 minutes is enough. Do check out this bike, the Van Nicolas Notau. And if you like this video and if you would like to see more content from the Polyglot Bikepacker on his trips, subscribe and like, and see you in the comments. Bye.